Well, I want to welcome you, my precious family and friends, as you join me today for this fresh manna. I trust each week you are being encouraged and helped along this great journey that God has given to us. Today I'm using Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, as the basis for our means of inspiration, encouragement, and blessing. It reads like this, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Let me ask you some questions. How many times you felt like calling it quits? How many times? How many times you felt like running away from it all and lock yourself up in your bedroom and keep to yourself? Have you ever felt like that in your life? Can I be honest with you? I feel that way sometimes. You are praying, and the more you pray, it seems the problem becomes bigger and bigger. The job becomes tougher. The boss treats you like dirt. The others in your family concoct evil schemes against you, and the list goes on and on and on. You have been doing your best, and it seems like you are doing the worst. And the enemy of your soul is rubbing it in as well. Trust me, he will do just that. He is telling you to quit. The word of the Lord comes to you today to inspire you to keep at it. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Keep doing well, for in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Have you ever heard about a half-hearted overcomer? Overcomers put their all into it. You will reap something for your labor. Hear what 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 says. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God is going to reward you if you don't quit. One person said this one time, you are too legit to quit. In 2 Chronicles 15, 7, it says, But as for you, be strong and do not give up for your works will be rewarded. Let me share this thought with you. Wishing will not bring a successful result, but desiring a result with a state of mind that becomes an obsession, then planning definite ways and means to achieve it, and backing those plans with persistence, which does not recognize failure, will produce results. Let me close with this story of two men who stopped just three feet, just three feet, you know, three feet from finding gold they were digging for. And it's very interesting. One of the most common causes of failure is the habit of quitting when one is overtaken by temporary defeat. Every person is guilty of this mistake at one time or the other. And this uncle, Uncle R.U. Darby, was caught by the gold fever in the gold rush days. And he went west to dig and grow gold. He stopped a claim and went to work with a pick and a shovel. After weeks of labor, he was rewarded by the discovery of the precious metal. He needed machinery to bring it to the surface. Quietly, he covered up the mine, retraced his footsteps to his home in Williamburg, Maryland, told his relatives and a few neighbors 
of this strike. They got together money for the needed machinery, had it shipped. The uncle and Darby went back to work the mine. Now the first car of ore was mined and shipped to a smelter. The returns prove they had one of the richest mines in Colorado. Can you imagine that? One of the richest mines. A few more cars of that ore would clear the deck. Then would come the big killing in profits. Down went the drill. Up went the hopes of Darby and Uncle. Then something happened. The vein of gold of ore disappeared. They had come to the end of the rainbow, and the pot of gold was no longer there. They drill on, desperately trying to pick up the vein again, all to no avail. Finally, they decided to quit. They sold the machinery to a junk man for a few hundred dollars and took the train. They took the train back home. Now the junk man called in a mining engineer to look at the mine and do a little calculating. The en engineer advised that the project had failed because the owners were not familiar with the fault line. His calculations show that the vein would be found just three feet from where Dar Darby and his cousin had stopped the drilling. That is exactly where it was found. The junk man took millions of dollars in ore from the mine because he knew enough to seek expert counsel before giving up. Today, you got hurt in the church, on your job, in your home, and you said to God, I am finished with this. I am finished with these things. I'm finished with working for you. I'm finished with working with people. I want to encourage you right now. Get back in there and labor for the Lord because you're going to gain the best if you faint not. Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Friend, listen to me today. Don't give up. You have come a long way, and God has something better for you. Don't quit. As I said earlier, you are too legit to quit. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today, Lord, that you have chosen us. And in spite of what we have faced and what we are facing, we know, Lord, that you will bring us through. Give us the strength. Give us the tenacity. Give us the wherewithal that we will be able to stand the tides. And Lord, we will not give up at the brink of a miracle, but we will see your good hand providing for us. Bless my brothers. Bless my sisters. Bless each one of them greatly. Let them understand that you love them and care for them. No matter what that takes place in their lives, they can trust you and honor you because you never give up on them. So, God, we will never give up what you have in store for us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Keep strong. Stay safe in the Lord. Let today be a great day for you a great day of possibilities, victories, and deliverances for your life. And remember, don't give up. You've come too far.